Today is March 5th, 2019. I'm Brent Nally, and this is my beautiful wife. Lauren Nally. And we just got back from Arenda, California, which is just outside of Berkeley, on the other side of the San Francisco Bay Area from where we are. We're on the San Francisco Peninsula side and Woodside, so it's about an hour drive. And a couple hours ago, we had our bone marrow extracted, didn't we? Yes, we did. And how are you feeling? I feel great. There's no residual pain whatsoever. I feel great too. We're not even taking any Tylenol, Advil, or ibuprofen. Don't plan on it. We're just going to take it easy the rest of the night, get a good night's sleep. And we're even planning on playing in our dodgeball tournament tomorrow night, right? Can't miss that. Yeah, cannot miss that. So we want to show you guys the entire procedure. It's about 15 minutes for each of us. So we're going to show you this unedited coming up. Before we show you that, we're going to show you Dr. Rogger, who did the procedure at his clinic, and he's going to explain a little bit of his credentials and the procedure. And if you're interested in this, we did this through a company called Forever Labs. They're headquartered in Michigan, and our bone marrow is now on ice in a FedEx package being sent on its way to Michigan. And if you're interested in this, we have a $500 value discount code in the description below. So check the description and you will type in that code and it will give you the first year storage cryogenic for free if you're interested in doing this through Forever Labs. All right, anything else you wanted to share right now? Get excited because crazy long needles are going into our backs. But we're still alive and healthy somehow. I'm Dr. Chad Rogger. I'm a uh, sports medicine specialist in Berkeley and Orinda. Uh, I do ultrasound guided procedures and I'm part of a multi-specialty orthopedic clinic. So we're talking about doing bone marrow aspiration to obtain mesenchymal stem cells and we're going over the procedure that will be done. Uh, the iliac crest is a tremendous uh, reservoir uh, for bone marrow and probably the easiest and least painful way for me to obtain this. So what we do is we take our individual, we lie them down on their stomach and we palpate our landmarks and we can real, really feel this bony prominence quite easily. If I take it a step further, I use an ultrasound machine so I can really see the bony surface and so I have an excellent landing point. And I had this out, oh here we go. And so what we do is we anesthetize the area so the person is nice and comfortable. Uh, and then we take a, a tool uh, called the Jim Sheedy that we put into the bone and then we remove and then this part is hollow like a straw. Then using a syringe, I aspirate approximately uh, 60 milliliters of, uh, of, of the bone marrow and then we put this back in so the suction is gone and then we remove this tool and the incision is less than three millimeters we put a stary strip band-aid over it and then away you go and have a great day so the the process will be uh, lying an individual down sterilizing their skin finding the iliac crest uh, numbing it so the patient is more comfortable then inserting the tool the uh, whole process of getting the bone marrow actually takes uh, less time than sterilizing and, pre and prepping the whole uh, surface. And how different is this than than a, somebody giving bone marrow for like a bone marrow transplant or something? Is this the, the same procedure? Process is very similar. Yeah. Okay. There's there's several different uh, ways that a, that the doctor will obtain the bone marrow, uh, but yeah, it's the exact same process. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And this one is a little easier on people because. Uh, uh, you're healthy, you're not sick, so there's not the scariness of what's going on. And uh, we should uh, be nice and hydrated, so actually pulling the bone marrow out is much less uh, uh, painful or difficult. That I'm a little obsessive compulsive is about preventing infection. Good. I've not ever had one. I do about 60 injections or procedures a week with ultrasound guidance. And you're not going to be my first infection. More than we'll do the alcohol swab.
This is the same room Ben Greenfield was in, right? This kid? It is, yeah. This is our procedure room in the clinic where we got all the tools and things that we need. And a little uh, far away from the waiting room so they can't hear you scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. This room looked a lot bigger on my laptop last night. But I guess it's the <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of the thing camera. in terms of uh, the procedure-wise when I say a little crowded-wise make sure we can move around. For sure. We were laughing the little kids were the worst. Guys. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what he said. He brought he brought his his camera crew. I'm like, like, well. are you filming? They're like, yeah, Dad. And he's like filming his feet, like right yeah. there. I'm like, your feet are dirty. Yeah. No, that's what somebody said on the Facebook. Yeah, live. that was like the first comment. Your I feet are dirty. Was his feet were dirty? Huh? He runs like marathons barefoot and stuff. It's yeah, crazy. his whole. Uh... <laughs> I guess he's done a bunch of interesting things that he's filmed there. Character. So what I'm putting on here now, this, this is a sterile covering over the ultrasound. So this is a sterile sheet, sterile gloves after I sterilized your skin. Uh, you know, the biggest, you know, risk for this procedure is, um, you know, you don't want to introduce infection. Here you're doing a, uh, an elective procedure, you know, looking forward to your health. And the last thing you want to do is cause a problem. So we're real, real careful about that. And this is sterile uh, solution to allow the ultrasound to be seen again so I can guide my incision accurately. So there's two parts where you get some discomfort. Number one is, you, you know, you, you do feel a needle poke. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the anesthetic. This is the lidocaine. So I put a little wheel of skin. So you're going to feel the, the skin poke and a little bit of burning. So just take a deep breath in the nose. Out the mouth, nice and relaxed. Okay, you're gonna get a little skin poke. You ready? One, two, poke. And a little burn here now. Feel that burn a little bit? Mm -hmm. So, the lidocaine, that's the irony of anesthetic sometimes, is anesthetic sometimes hurts when you put it in. But it does work. So now if you come over and look at the screen here, you're gonna get it. So you just keep doing that breathing you're doing now. You're doing great. So what I'm seeing, and you can point out her uh, iliac crest on the screen right there. So you're going to have a little discomfort right now, okay? And you can see the uh, needle is right there. Hannah's pointing it out to you right there, okay? So the covering over the bone is called the periosteum. And so you have a little bit of nerve endings right uh, right at the cover of the bone. Show with your finger right down there. That's right where the needle is right now on the screen. So I'm anesthetizing this area to try to make the next part of the procedure for her a little bit more tolerable. So there's a good, do a screen save for me so we can show that to her later. Thank you, Hannah. Doing okay? Yeah. Now, sometimes when people have this, your body's autonomic nervous system starts reacting. Like, that's your fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. And so you're feeling something in your body, you're like, hey, this isn't normal. And your body is like, hey, I should shunt blood to my muscles so I can run away. Or I, or I can fight whatever's happening. Well, you can't do that because you're kind of stuck there doing an elective procedure. So you got to sit there and kind of take it. And then sometimes you'll feel a little clammy. You'll sweat, you'll feel a little nauseous, uh, you'll feel a little tunnel vision-y. So all those things might be going on right now. But I find if I tell people, if you just um, become a scientist and analyze your symptoms. Oh, I'm feeling a little clammy. He said I might sweat. What is that like? Yeah. Oh, I'm feeling a little like he said that would happen. And don't fight it. Just kind of keep breathing nice and slow. A lot of times your body will kind of normalize and those feelings will go away. So just kind of relax. You're doing great. There's no needle or anything in you right now. We're just resting to let the anesthetic take place. So that's one of the hardest parts of the procedure and you're done. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. So you can just relax. And I always give the anesthetic time time to work and uh, sometimes I think we just get too fast we don't let the anesthetic work and then a person's anesthetic kicks in when the procedure is over but uh, we'll check one thing being in a doctor's office we got as much anesthetic as you need 
So if you feel like you need a little bit more, um, I'll give you a little bit more. So let me check with this real quick. My sister-in-law is uh... Yeah, does this feel sharp to you? No, I don't feel anything. Alright, keep breathing, nice and easy. One, two, three, breathe. Might feel something here. Oh yeah, I feel that. Okay. My sister-in-law is uh, in her last year of med school for uh -huh. to be a nurse anesthetist. Uh-huh. So oh, she's going to love this video. I don't even think she knows we're doing this today. <laughs> a little pressure now in a second. Okay, keep breathing. You doing okay? Mm-hmm. Good. I don't know how people do like brain surgery where they're awake and then you know that someone's fooling around with their brain or like What? No, I'm because... just saying like it's weird to know that he's doing stuff and I can only sort of feel it. Yeah. Okay, you know, keep breathing. You're gonna feel a little something here now. You doing okay? Yeah. Okay, so Hannah, do a freeze save for me. Okay, you're gonna feel some pressure now, okay? So keep breathing. Nice and easy, you're gonna feel some pressure from me. Feeling that pressure? Mm -hmm. You're handling it okay? Breathing. Might feel a little spasm in the lower part of your back. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. a little kind of tightening. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, you might feel a little like uh, like if you lift something heavy, like you're tightening in your buttock a little bit. Mm -hmm. You feel that? Oh yeah, no, yeah. Okay, so. Do you, how many languages do you speak? Two. But I can so, swear in more. Okay. <laughs> Colorful <laughs> metaphors are allowed in my clinic. So I want you to count to 30 in your second language. And don't think about how tight oh, you're getting. God. Okay. You can count out loud. Oh, but I might mess the numbers up. Oh, yeah, and then it's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on video. We don't want that. Do Trace, come on, you got it. Now, for posterity, mm -hmm. how much pain are you in right now? Like a two. Two? Okay. That's pretty good. I'll I accept that. Kind of numb in that whole area. area. Oh, do I feel a scraping? No. Oh, then that's my intestines. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Might feel a little pressure again. So we always want to make sure we get the pockets. Okay. All right, you might get that spasm again, okay? Do that counting for me again. You're doing great, Lauren. I would say that we are almost at the conclusion of this procedure. And then when does the blood get cryogenically frozen? We, we prepare it and send it. Probably we've already called FedEx or they're on hold. So now what I want you to do is take a deep breath. One, two, three, deep breath, and we are done. Wow. All done, Lauren. That was barely anything. Wait, I didn't, I didn't hear that. <laughs> what? what did you say? That was barely anything. I built it up in my head way That's more. music to their ears, oh, mine too. Oh my gosh. No, you, you're so good. We'll just wait till you see the video. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, cool. Did you actually get it working? I'm, I'm recording on my camera because I couldn't get your, the Osmo working on yours. You'll figure it out though. She's the brains in this operation. So come on and just lean a little closer. 
and look at the incision site. So watch that. Okay, ready? That's it. So yeah, it's still bleeding a little bit. Yeah, just this minute. I put direct pressure on it, but it just you see how small it is. Yep. So I'm gonna put direct pressure on there just for a smidgen. Put it on there for for a minute. It's not so bad though. It's like the dentist is worse. This is fine. Yeah. So you know, if you film over here, mm -hmm. you know we got. You know, the gym sheety, which we enter and then draw through, and then we have the collection there. So, you know, it's a pretty nice setup. And how many CCs that's is that? 60. 60, 30 mm -hmm. in each, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, wow. Yeah. Did it felt, feel like he was taking that much out of you? No. You did, didn't you did very it. well. Thank you. And that's about, I knew you were starting to have a little bit of not, you know, just that autonomic nervous system reaction. Yeah, your body can't help it. It's like it's, mind over matter. Right, kind of thing, yeah. Trying to... And that's about 4% of her bone marrow, is uh, that right? We could have taken lots, lots, yeah. lots more. And then the body just regenerates that over yeah. time. And bone marrow is the blood in the, inside the bone. Yeah, so, so you have, blood, right? it's where it's being created. And you, uh, so these cells are kind of your body's precursor cells. And we think it has, you know, well, your genetic information. So we can use that, uh, you know, to, to stimulate growth in other areas. And a lot of things with stem cells, we think if you put these cells in an environment, they act as, uh, they communicate with the body, and they're actually like a signal for your body to send in healing cells to the area. Medicinal and, signaling yeah, cells. Right, yep. that's the main thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. You've done your research. Yeah. So when we do like procedures right now, it's a little bit of a misnomer calling like um, doing stem cells. It's not... Like when we do it in like orthopedics, it's not necessarily that the cells we're getting are going to transform into cartilage, but it is a big signaler so we can kind of bypass the first stage of inflammation or promote the later stages of tissue growth. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're putting, so steri strips will fall off on their own. Okay. And then we're putting a waterproof dressing. This is Lana, our crack medical assistant, <laughs> taking care of this. She wait, sets everything up. Wait one more up. time. I wasn't seeing that. There <laughs> and um, this uh, other dressing is a waterproof dressing, so you can shower and everything tonight. Okay. I just don't want you in a pool or a hot tub for a week just to heal up. Sure. This dressing can come off in two days, and the steri strips will fall off on their own. There it is. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, you can um, sit on up here in just a moment. Bob can pull up a little bit and sit on up, and you can stand in front of your your cells here. Okay. How you feel? I feel fine. Good. Generally, most people do fine with just a Tylenol or an Advil, or a, okay. you know, if they need it, or nothing, or an ice bag. Oh yeah. We'll give you a little ice bag to go home okay. with. Wow. And then, so this massive thing was inside my back. Yes. Oh God. Wow, it's almost like purple blood. Yeah. And here you go. Well, for the company there, they'll be happy with that. Yeah. There we go. Forever lives. <laughs> Steve will. I've kind of heard before. The main thing. What is that? Forty pounds. Just to make sure you're comfortable. We don't want to get anything on your UK shirt. No, no, we do not. Okay. You comfortable? Yeah, I'm comfortable. Again, you can shift around a little bit. It should be, uh, you know, about the same amount of time as it took for Lauren. Okay. Here. I don't want that the pants to be making you uncomfortable. Is that no, well? Is that okay? That's good. That's good. Okay. Okay. I've lost weight from all this intermittent fasting, so now the pants. Oh, are you doing the yeah the fasting? Yeah, we do. So you're going to improve your health, bowel health, and longevity, and you're not going to catch a cold again. I hope so. Right? Isn't that the thought? That's, yeah. We did 72 hours before we landed in Rome, and then we. Well, hopefully you weren't fasting when you were in Italy. That no, was no, pretty impossible. A waste of a trip. <laughs>
No, we pizza, no. pasta, wine, yeah. gelato. Thank we, goodness. Yeah. I was going to have to say I'm not sure I can do this procedure on someone who would <laughs> waste the <laughs> Italian trip on a fast. I was going to be really disappointed. So again, on this one here, uh, we lay a person in the prone position. Palpate the bony landmarks. We're looking at the iliac crest, and that's where I feel superior aspect right here. And then I follow it up. And then you can see on the ultrasound, you can see the outline of his iliac crest there. So in terms of safety, and a great question that you folks posed to me, and I would pose if I was in this similar position, is like, hey, can you hurt anything? Can you get into any trouble? Well, not only do I know the landmarks, but then I can visualize this bone, and we're going to watch the whole procedure, um, you know, real time. And we can see his anatomy again because of his superior fasting and dietary skills, he makes this a much easier procedure for me. So the next thing, again, we talk about is we don't want to do an elective procedure to prolong life and then risk any infection. There's different, people do different formulations. In general, you can do um, HIBA cleanse and alcohol swab. I, I use a little bigger of a scrub here, but then I, I clean this off with alcohol. Just I want to get rid of any, kill anything that could be introduced into the system. So uh, a HIBA cleanse with alcohol is what some people will rightly use, and I use when I do most of my injections, but I kind of go overboard a little with this just to ensure, and I've never had a problem with my particular skin, skin cleansing with a problem. We'll do one more, then we'll do alcohol. Arms and everything okay up there? Yeah, we're good. Good. You mentioned this is your first time doing this, right? Yeah, you know, I, I, I slept at Holiday Inn Express last <laughs> night. So I figured I'm pretty good at these things by now. Are they the uh, ones that leave the light on for you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm a, uh, I'm bordered in medicine and sports medicine, and I have uh, extra training in diagnostic ultrasound and ultrasound guided procedures. So the bulk of my job is, is doing uh, needle procedures and minimally invasive procedures. So getting trained on getting bone marrow kind of hit into my, my skill set pretty easily. And um, also the interest in red, regenerative medicine as we do multiple regenerative medicine techniques in our clinic here. We do uh, use amniotic allografts, we do platelet-rich plasma, we do bone marrow, and we do, uh, uh, we, uh, we do liposuction for fat cells, and we do uh, procedures using uh, uh, getting mesenchymal cells from uh, adipose tissue from the abdomen. So kind of a, a lot of uh, research, you know, figuring out which way is the best way to do things. Yeah, I, I hear both. I I do a lot of research on this stuff, and it mm -hmm. seems like there's benefits to both. So we're going to think about getting our adipose fat stored as well. Yeah, that's you know when you when you're trying to figure out what cells we're getting, and actually, what in fact is happening when we introduce these cells and we're doing practical applications. Um, you know, it, it's kind of as you mentioned, uh, recruiting your body's. Uh, immune response and then kind of coordinating it and getting the part of it you want to promote healing without the part that can cause pain. And uh, so it's, it's very interesting. Okay, so that's all sterile here. All right, we're getting ready to start. Now one okay. of the first parts is going to be the anesthetic. And again, the irony that an anesthetic can hurt. So you're going to get a little sting from the lidocaine. And uh, that's going to happen here in just a second. If you're ready. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right, so you're going to get a little skin poke here. One, two, poke. And there you go. A little burn underneath there. Feel that? Yep. So this is one of the uncomfortable parts. And there is his bone. So if you're going to take a deep breath in the nose, out the mouth. And again, as a guy, or with you know good muscle mass and everything, 
your body's going to try to shunt your blood to your muscles. So if you feel sweaty, feel your heart rate change, feel a little clammy, you know, don't fight it. Um, just kind of analyze it as a scientist what you're feeling. And you can see on the screen there, so that's his iliac crest. So what I'm doing is I'm anesthetizing kind of the periosteum around the bone. I find if I really take my time and uh, get this area nice and numbed up, uh, the procedure is a little easier on him. Meditation helps. Meditation does help. I feel like I'm on a beach in Hawaii right now. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm going to go there right now. Key Southwest, $49 oh, each yeah. way right Southwest now. What? Mm-hmm. What? Are you kidding? We're doing product placement right now for the YouTube, babe. Did you realize that? Yeah. Yeah, you guys got to reach <laughs> out. Say, hey, pro proactively, we <laughs> reached out to you. We should be your natural spokespeople. <laughs> doing okay down there? All good. Okay. So, as you can see, I've got excellent visualization on where I'm going to go. And I'm um, going to just kind of get a little more anesthetic through this area. And then I'll deposit the rest as we go kind of out. It was really just that first initial prick. My right leg kind of jumped a little bit. I wasn't really ready for it. But now I'm, I'm doing good. Good. So the, um, the next part of the procedure, the uncomfortable part, will primarily be when I'm removing the bone marrow. And you almost get a vacuum effect because I'm removing material and then the body kind of fills in what I've replaced and you can feel kind of a tightening in your low back and maybe kind of down through the buttock like if you're lifting something and you think you're going to pull your back but mm -hmm. you don't quite that's probably the most common thing that people kind of said that they'll feel so the needle's out um, I wait a little extra long for the anesthetic to kick in just give it a chance because it works at a different speed in different people and so in a few seconds here we'll start the procedure and if you're feeling more pain or something sharp or pressure I can give you more anesthetic you don't have to be a martyr I have bottles and bottles of it so be comfortable but I gave you enough that really should be enough and to be honest it was plenty for your wife and she did. <laughs> oh you're going there huh? oh man it's <laughs> oh, oh, be okay here, right? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't uh, care to be a baby anymore. Yeah. Right, so I'm gonna put a, a little pressure on you here. If this feels sharp or uncomfortable, you let me know. Is that sharp or uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. Good. This one was a good one, huh? All right, you might feel a little pressure here. Doing okay? Mm-hmm. You're not sticking that thing in me, are you? No, of oh, course okay. not. Okay, you can see on the screen kind of where I'm going here. But you're going to feel some pressure, Brent, okay? okay? I'm hurting you. It might be a little sore, but just keep breathing in the nose, out the mouth. That uncomfortable to you? A little work. We're good though. So you can see I got good interface on the bone there. And you know, young, healthy people, young, healthy bones. You might feel that little vacuum effect I talked to you about. A little something. That was a vacuum, I guess. Yeah. He jumped. Yeah, well, I, I felt it at that point when I jumped. Okay, you might feel a little pressure here now, okay? Okay. Feel pressure there? Little. Yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Okay, so that's the flash that tells me I'm in the right spot. Okay, so we're in the right spot. Now is when you kind of do your meditation and go on that Southwest flight to Hawaii you talked to me about. Oh, yeah. And just really just kind of think slow, easy thoughts. 
nice and easy for me, okay? Because you're going to feel that tightness. This is the uncomfortable mm -hmm. part. So just kind of nice and easy. Nice. In the nose and out the mouth. In the nose and out the mouth. You're doing great, babe. We're over halfway done with the procedure and you're giving it up quite nicely. So I'm very pleased with the procedure. Okay, so hang in there. We're in the home stretch. And again, there's different, little different pockets that you want to go to. And I don't like causing a vacuum effect on people too much. So what I'll do is I'll do a little twist and kind of find another little pocket to make sure I'm not just getting blood, but that I'm getting, you know, bone fresh marrow. bone marrow. Yeah. You know, that's what we do. So we got one syringe already, okay? Okay. You can tell by like the color of it, right? That's different. Yeah, well, you can. Talking. Like if you're just getting blood. I mean, these guys at Forever Lab are really good about, you know, what I give them that they, they get good material as long as I get about 40 milliliters, and I always send more. Yeah, we're getting 60, right? Yep. How's your pain doing now? A little painful, but you know what? This is important stuff here, so I can power through. Okay. All right, well, I'm about to get started. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take this, you know. Okay, deep breath in the nose, out the mouth. Okay, and we're done. It's out. Oh boy. So your pain should start feeling better here soon. Yeah, it's definitely getting better. Good. So if you kind of lean in here, see how small his incision? He's not even bleeding. Oh yeah. That's it right there. It's the fasting. It's the intermittent fasting. We're already healing. So we're going to put on the uh, Steri strip, which will fall off on their own. We're putting on a waterproof dressing that you take off in two days. And we have written instructions for you that Hannah will go with, over with you at the end. All right. Because you're on the other side. Awesome. Thanks, sir. No, my pleasure. I leave you in the hands of our skilled medical assistant, Lana, who takes care of business here for us. Thanks, Hi. Lana. Oh, did we get Hannah? Hannah, wave over there. <laughs> Hi. Doing, doing good. Oh, this is That's such good visualization on this. I didn't, I didn't tell you to free save. That's my bone marrow. Should I just do that from now on? You can. <laughs> hopefully that will help us a lot some point in the future. We'll see. Yeah. Well, hopefully you won't need it. Oh, and I'm then we'll, we'll figure out the ways to prevent any I got big plans, condition, got neurologic, big plans. orthopedic. <laughs> you got big plans? I already had some uh, uh, Wharton's jelly injected in me a couple months ago okay. in some local places and IV. So maybe at some point we'll use this to do yeah. similar treatments. Very good. We'll All see. Right. Well, good. All right. Well, let so Lana much. finish up the dressing, and then I'll chat with you All both right. at the end. Perfect. Perfect, thank, thank you. There's uh, an anticoagulant in the syringes that keep it from clotting, and it's actually good for 48 hours, so nothing will happen to it. And it has to stay room temperature, so we don't want it to freeze or get too cold or get too hot. So there's going to be little thermal uh, things inside the package to check the temperature constantly. So if it goes too much this way or too much another way, it would let, let us know that that happened which we don't predict. But just in case, it's there. And then once it gets to Forever Labs, then they process it and get it frozen and do what they need to do. Fantastic. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. It goes, oh, it goes into this, that silver yeah, pack. Yeah, if I can have you hand me that little uh, hazard out. Yeah. This right here? Yeah, okay. with a little thermal. So this is a cold thingy and this is a hot thingy. And it tells oh, the lab okay. when it gets there, if it's reached a certain temperature that it shouldn't. And do you know, is that going to Michigan? Forever Labs, or is it? I believe. Wait a minute. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yeah. Forever Labs. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. 
Very cool. And they call the uh, the people, with, they take it straight to the airport, so it doesn't go through anywhere else. Oh. It's a courier for Forever Love. So okay. They come straight here and then off to the airport. They got this whole process figured out. Oh, yeah, and they've been doing this for a while. We've been doing them with them for about two or three years. Yeah. 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 And we've never had any issues. It's really exciting stuff, and that's why we're making YouTube videos so people can Pretty understand cool. the science and the benefits of it. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.